Do you want social justice? Now I give you social justice. The Zana way. Don't trade on us. The Freedom Rifle by Zana. The most affordable military grade semi automatic AR 15 rifle in M4 configuration. Chambered in 223 Wild. They can shoot both 556 5, NATO and 223 Remington. Four minutes of angle for just $499. Made in the USA. Get your Freedom Rifle now. We need every law abiding American armed with knowledge and at least one military rifle ready to defend good against evil. With every Don't Trade on Us rifle, you will get free parchment replica of the United States Constitution, free digital CD Don't Trade on Us, free ebook How to Become a Rifleman, free t shirt Slaves are never armed, I am not a slave, free 30 rounds magazine were allowed by the law. Free laser engraved ejection port, don't trade on us, for just $499. Go to www.freedomrifle.com, www.freedomrifle.com. Get your Freedom Rifle now. Here we go guys and girls, you're listening to Love, Guns and Freedom with Luca Zanna on K-Talks 1340 AM and our United States do the FM network. Also, don't forget, we are in uh, sister station, FM, 104.1 FM. Uh, this is very neat. I've never been on the FM station. That's pretty nice. And uh, I also hope uh, the people from Bullhead, listening from Bullhead, can appreciate it. You have a big, bigger, stronger signal. Now, I would like to talk about, in this hour, normally about guns. You know, I'm not really a technical guy. I like to shoot guns. Uh, that's what I like to do and of course I like to buy guns and more important I like to think about a gun not as the final ending but it's like a tool it's a, it's an instrument and more important it's it's like a symbol a symbol of freedom but there are also you know there's a, there is an aspect that normally I don't talk much about guns there are different models there are so many different variety and as I said for me at the end of the day I don't care which gun you have all I care that you are trained with that gun, you know how to use it, and of course you know, uh, more important, the laws, you're safe, and you're proficient. And more important, you are the gun, you are the weapon. Uh, the gun is just an extension of yourself. But when I want to talk about, let's say, new products, new guns, new ideas, I like to talk with people like my friend El Tenda, that, uh, by the way, he has a great YouTube channel, that really put a lot of effort and, and, and love in sharing new products, new ideas, and more important, you know, what they really industries, industry, the gun industry is bringing to you. So I like to have, uh, you know, people like him talking about it, because as I said, I, I don't really, you know, for me, at the end of the day, I don't care which gun you have. I don't really care. All I care that you have at least one gun, at least, and of course, a rifle. Fabrizio Eltenda from Illinois, are you there? Hey, how you doing? How you doing? I'm, I'm okay, my friend. Thank you. And uh, I always follow your post. And as you know, you're always uh, busy uh, not only talking about guns, because I follow your YouTube channel, but also you make guns. You know, you work for a company that uh, you make guns. And I'm very excited. Mm -hmm. I always like when people, you know, we try to, after all, I think every gun business out there, you know, I'm a little different from uh, somebody from the competition. I don't look at this as competition. I see like uh, we gun, uh, gun manufacturers, we are pretty much, let's say, uh, like almost uh, a homeland security for the country. We must provide mm. uh, guns. And I think more is better because I believe in competition. I believe in competition when they're really free market, we can get better prices for the public and more important, better products. So I always welcome everybody who's in the industry. You know, that's why I want to also, if you want, you can talk about the company you work for, you're more than welcome. And more important, tell me about what you've been doing. I know you're always busy on your channel. You've been working on a new gun. Uh, go ahead, I'll give you the floor. Oh, thank you very much. First of all, uh, um, I'd like to say something about you, the thing you were mentioning before. I think there is so many companies right now that, um, there's plenty of market for everybody. Okay, so uh, thank God the prices went down. So you can, you know, even, you know, the, the, even that, which is a good thing. Everybody should be armed. Uh, honest, you know, law abiding citizen should be armed anyway because it's part of the, you know, constitution and everything. But anyway, uh, yeah, I work for a company based in uh, Illinois, uh, of course, in Lake County, which is a, a free part of Illinois, free almost. 
Uh, so it's called DR Guns, like a Delta Romeo Guns. Mm -hmm. uh, it's um, you know they, we've been uh, small. And it's, a, it's a recent gun uh, it's company. Sorry, we, we come from another one which we don't want to mention. And um, we pretty much my boss start a new company and we make billet um, upper and lower means the billet means that they are made they are not cast or forged. Billet means they they made from. Um, <clears throat> From a block, of, from one block of aluminum, pretty much. Okay, mm, that's nice. so the machine cut everything. Uh, normally, in two, three operations, cut everything, and by the end, you have a finished product that, of course, need to be tumbled, sanded, and anodized, whatever. And uh, we we uh, we have a website. We offer um, a simple version of the 3D, uh, sorry, of the billet upper and lower, which is compatible with the forged upper if you have one already. And one that is a WOW exclusive, which is the 3D, which is a set that has to be sold together because they, you know, for the, uh, for the, for the um, feedings, you know, we make a uh, AR-10, of course, and 556 to the three, whatever you want to call it. We make handguards, which they're really light. You probably saw the features and look, they look at mm -hmm. and they're really light compared to other company. And the most important thing, the Baronat is made of steel. Which is an important thing. Most of the company nowadays on the budget. I mean, like chi made in China stuff like that. The baronet is made in, al in aluminum, which can create a problem. That's true. Uh, a for installation and also for the life of the product. We make charging handles. We make uh, what else? Ball carriers, which is this. Um, and now we come out with a new product. For now, it's just a lower. Okay, in eighty percent or normal uh, version. Uh, you know, finish. Uh, that's where, which is the nine millimeter uh, AR. Uh, it works with the Glock magazines. Wow! It's really I nice. I like as that. For design, mm -hmm. can be interesting if you own a Glock like you do. You can make a transition very quickly. You can carry just four Glock thirty-two round magazine of Glock, yeah. and you know, and pretty much switch. You know, if your gun goes off or your rifle doesn't work, you can always use the mag magazine as backup. I'm looking. Right, I'm watching right now your short video that uh, you posted uh, about this uh, upcoming nine millimeter AR pistol that you have. Mm -hmm. I mean, it's really nice. The quality looks very, very good. I mean, uh, as I see what you were saying here, for example, the rail is made of uh, steel or aluminum. What is made of? Aluminum. 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 Okay. The rail is aluminum, and uh, if you go on the website, there's only possible information. I'm not really an expert about. Uh, Mm -hmm. um, you know all the technical, you know, okay. uh, mechanical and all that stuff. But um, like I said, um, it's they're they nice handguard. They're really light, and we make them in M lock key mod. Mm -hmm. uh, you got a little bit more choices in the M lock. In M lock, we make nine. We probably gonna make a seven two in the next future. Give the make uh, give, the, give the website out, please, so people. Can, I, I will, I'm curious oh, myself. Sure. Go ahead. It's called www drgunsllc.com okay dr guns llc okay i'm there right now oh that's nice you know i may also contact you guys to see prices because you know i'm always looking for ball groups and different components for my uppers i mean never know may do some business too that would be great let's see do you do no also do you do also for example gas tubes do you make a charging no, no we don't we don't we are we charge an angle we do gas blocks we do make gas blocks steel gas blocks 750 low profile yeah and gas tube for now is not worth it you mm -hmm. know yeah, because the cost is kind of yeah, so we're trying to make stuff that price wise you know you kind of you know yeah I it's worth actually investing money because yeah. designing an end guard for example is it's, yeah wow well, it's a, a two digit number yeah okay it's true it so, is true yeah, but we do, we do. Yeah, no problem. You can call anytime. But like I said, the nine that I built that you saw in the video mm, is actually a hybrid, okay? Because we're gonna offer a full size rifle, 16 inch barrel, mm -hmm. which is more like a competition. Um, and there's gonna be a 10 inch, 10 and a half. I, I actually believe it's 11. Sorry, the barrel. And you can really go shorter than that because the bullet. If you are at 50 meters, you know, yeah. again, it's never shoot mine, but that's feedback from a friend of mine that is making a billion, a bunch of them overseas for law enforcement and not. 
Um, they said they were saying that after 50 feet, the nine millimeter bullet can tend to open the pattern a little bit too much. Yeah, which is understandable. It's it's a pistol pistol cartridge, but it's a completely different. Outside might look like an AR, but there's no gas system, mm-hmm. like no gas plug, no gas tube. Yeah. the boy carrier looked like a pistol boy carrier, pretty much like a like a pistol, you know. Yes, uh, and um, the buffer is different than a regular. You can use a regular air buffer in emergency, but we normally, I normally recommend, and mine is probably built a different way, you know, because I like to do mine in a different way. Yeah. And uh, the buffer is heavier than an H3, which is probably uh, way heavier than a regular air, probably like a third heavier, but the spring is shorter and thicker, okay? So that helps with the recoil. Um, it helps the bolt a little bit to close properly. Um, we don't make a uh, last round bolt open version yet, mm-hmm. but we will. We're working on something. Okay. I mean, it's something. I mean, I'm an AK. Sorry, go ahead. No, go ahead. Finish, please. Go ahead. Not an AK guy. Uh, sorry, I'm an AK guy. <laughs> so to me, it's not a big deal. I mean, to training and everything, if the gun doesn't go click, you know, I change the magazine right away or I find another solution. I do prefer gun with a bolt open just for training purpose for, for new new newbies, you know what I mean? Yes. Uh, for now, we're using a regular AR upper, which is perfectly fine. Um, we might eventually make one. Um, there are out there versions the other company makes that are both open, but I have to say this, it doesn't work all the time. Mm. So, you know, I it's, see. it's a pro and con. You know? Well, I, I like the idea that you can use, you know, of course, uh, Glock magazine in this case, at least it's a very common uh, standard yeah. gun out there. I'm just thinking mm-hmm. about, you know, also the benefit of using nine millimeters uh, caliber instead of, uh, let's say, five five six to twenty three, for example. You know, first of all, everybody, well, not everybody. Normally, you carry a pistol, a handgun, and uh, let's say in an ur- urban environment, it's easy to think, you know, a nine millimeter. It's a pretty good round, considering also the potential over penetration that you may have with other rifle rounds. So I think it's a great uh, opportunity also to cheap, you know, to also, uh, let's say, train pretty affordable too, because uh, you can buy now the prices of nine millimeters, especially if you st- if you buy, you know, let's say, um, steel case like I do for my Glocks to, to train. You can buy a box of 50, 50 rounds of nine millimeters, uh, brown bear or wolf for about eight dollars a box. So that's pretty good for 50 rounds. So it's a good training tool. But also, I think it's a good uh, opportunity to to create that extra thing that you need, you know, is a carabine after all. Of course, this is technically mm-hmm. is a pistol because, you know, you have not really a stock. You cannot put that gun on your shoulder, you know, unless you have a special license. So it's still a pistol, but, you know, you mm-hmm. have a longer, uh, let's say you have a longer um, barrel, you have extra speed, and you can still mm-hmm. rely somehow on the same magazine that you carry with your gun. So I think there are some good benefits also for self-defense. Um, so that's the one on the video. Is your personal co- copy, your personal uh, sample? The what, sorry? The, 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 the one that you have on your video of this uh, pistol, 9mm. Uh, yeah, yeah, it's mine. It's mine. Yes, it's mine. I build it in a different way. Uh, because the ATF lately, le- recently passed the law about the, they, they re- revision it. They think about the, the, the braces, not the stocks. And they say you can shoulder them now. Recently, but again, I don't trust. Uh, well, you know, technically, you know, the moment, I'm no lawyer, but I know for sure if you have, let's say, a pistol, let's say, mm-hmm. a carabine, you know, pistol, mm-hmm. and the moment that you put it on your shoulder without a class three distracted devices, you know, like uh, pr- pretty much like could be a short shotgun or could be uh, a f- full auto. I mean, you must have a special federal uh, ATF license, okay? Mm-hmm. The moment that you put yeah. on your shoulder without the type of uh, class three license, uh, that's huge trouble. That can become, uh, unfortunately, you know, like a felony in at least uh, for what my record. So you want to mm-hmm. be sure that, you know, when you have the type of situation with the shorter barrels, shorter than 16 inches, you use it only as a pistol unless you have the special license. And of course, that's another story. I know it's stupid. Uh, unfortunately, it's ridiculous. But that's the way it is, and that's how they good people they can be pretty much uh, be transformed in overnight in a second in uh, felons for the rest of their life. Think about it. Mm-hmm. You are a great person. Mm-hmm. Uh, you don't break any law just because you put that pistol 
carabine pistol with a, a barrel less than 16 inches on your shoulder, even if there is not a real stock, but something that simulates a stock, at that point, you are breaking the federal law. That's very serious. And they come after you and they throw the book normally. That's uh, what they do. Yeah. I would believe if you, if you now, like I said, I, since I worked for a gun manufacturer, we were uh, you know, doing some research. And one of the companies that makes these braces mm -hmm. called Itatica, I believe, and they wrote a letter to ATF, and, uh, and they were discussing about what to do with this kind of stock, okay? Uh, and then, because initially, the, these braces were made for people that lost a, uh, an arm or something like that in, in a combat situation, which is a sad thing. Mm -hmm. And they, well, and they recently, they had a discussion with, you know, with, with, uh, with ATF, and uh, I think it's like a month ago. There's a couple of videos, if you want to look up online. Yes. And uh, they're saying that they give you the approval. The ETF actually gives the approval to use it. Wow. Although there is a restriction, there is a restriction. For example, the one you see in a pistol, yeah. um, mine is made by uh, Shockwave, okay? It's like a blade, it's like a piece of plastic. It's decently comfortable to shoot, but, mm -hmm. but you gotta be careful how much you extend that blade. Wow. Because you're gonna measure from the barrel to the rear of the blade. And then again, don't quote me on that. That's something very obscure. If you don't use this SB brace, you're using mine, okay? With mine, you gotta be careful how much you extend it. In that case, you'll be, uh, you know, under, you know, you can be in trouble. So you know what I mean. Yeah. But honestly, I don't. I have no problem shooting from the cheek. It's not an issue, you know. Yeah. It's not okay. a, really an issue. Well, I'm not. A, I'm not pretending to, to be a sniper with an AR pistol, you know. Yeah. No, I understand. I, ju I just. I just try to avoid always. You know. I, I know how it can be. <laughs> devastating the consequences you know even just oh, half, yeah. half inch half inch out of a shotgun uh you know half mm -hmm. inch out of the barrel of a rifle bang you are in mm -hmm. a new world of trouble with the atf that's why you know i always try to say be sure guys before you do any modification to your gun consult uh first of all somebody who knows the laws uh doesn't need to be necessarily a lawyer i go straight to the atf sometimes just call him and don't even yeah. trust their phone call got something in writing because you know sometimes over the phone you can get somebody that yeah. says no and then what you do oh they told me yeah told you what bang you're gone so this is very serious yeah, matter you know that's why the company that makes the dsb and the cac they put online a form that you can print okay mm -hmm. and i recommend everybody to keep one inside the rifle the stock yes. of the rifle so if there's any problem you can pull it out and show it to the law enforcement that's good that's very very, very good excellent you know all paper, right. I'm very against paper, you know? but yeah sorry you no know, very good i'm glad that this is important information as i said you know this is not just about shooting the gun it's also sometimes i know people that uh let's say honest mistakes here don't really fly mm -hmm. in front of the ATF, okay? People may do, hey, I was, I was just experimenting, changing a barrel, oh, I cut the barrel maybe half inch a little bit, oh, I removed the stock, oh, I put the stock at that pistol, guess what? Learn, be sure what you're doing, this is not a game. Even the, even the parts, you know, even the US made parts, you know, there are compliances, you know? You mm -hmm. must have a certain mm -hmm. amount of uh, US made parts on each rifle, and if you have a, uh, not enough of these parts you can get in trouble there too i mean people i didn't know this stuff till a few years ago so i'm not really mm -hmm. surprised how you know many other people may not know this stuff you know seriously but uh, any other thing from your channel anything going on that you have going any new product any new uh, testing uh, well, except for i don't i didn't do a lot of video recently because uh, um as somebody saw on facebook and instagram and whatever i have a new puppy so <laughs> and so I want to take care of him. And by the way, if I can say something, it's like, please don't, everybody wants to buy a puppy. Don't think it's a cute thing. Think about it because it's a responsibility, okay? Oh, yeah. Like a human being, pretty much. And don't go buy in the shop, please. Go to the shelter. Uh, if you can help a shelter, even donating a couple of bags of food uh, a year, I'm not saying every month. Yeah. That's a nice thing. The, the, and I had mine from a shelter. It's a beautiful Rottweiler mix. I mean, I don't know how I end up there. There were even a dog over there with a nine millimeter stuck in, in the throat, which is an horrible thing. I don't know how that happened, but um, they're like in, the, in this local shelter, they have like over 100 dogs and they have to put a couple of them down every week. Oh my gosh, that's true. Um, that's true. So it's very good to do yeah. that. You're right. 
You know, don't, you don't need to go buy the brand new uh, puppy at the shop. You know, go to the shelter. You save a life, and uh, and that's really yep. also you realize how sometimes you know some shelters may be better than others. But at the end of the day, there are still places of torture, in my opinion, because you know they're there for they know it that if they don't go fast, these uh, these uh, poor little guys they they will pretty much be ready to be killed. So it's only a question oh, yeah. of time. That's why if you want to save a life of a little puppy or even a cat, I mean, go straight to the sh shelter and uh, you can find. Oh, yeah. And I think also sometimes, you know, I tell you, I got a lot of uh, little uh, uh, cats from the shelters. I'm not saying that uh, mm -hmm. they are better, but sometimes I really believe with all the animals that they went through pain and especially they know that there's, there's not exactly a happy place to be. When then you find them mm -hmm. and they find you because somehow they have the little connection that you can figure it out when you go to see them. It's almost a deeper relation. They, I almost oh, yeah. think they remember. So you almost, uh, they can understand you saved them. You brought them to a regular mm -hmm. life. You know, that's uh, very nice, you know. All right. Yeah, I mean, they're, tra they're trustworthy friends, you know. Other than that, like I said, video wise, I have a review of a leash that a friend of mine sent me in a collar. Mm -hmm. The friend that makes really nice thing. It's called Beaching. Like beaching, like yes, beaching, Tatica. It's a veteran, a military veteran, which is um, he, he does video. Also has a YouTube channel. It's called the Prepper, the Prepper Bunker Outdoor, which video about knives, prepping, and other stuff. And he makes really nice sling that I I like. It's another important thing as part of your gear. Yes. But other than that, I might do another video, but better video when I'm finished with an eye. I do have planned an interview with my good friend Mark Kreb of Kreb Custom here okay. in Wakanda, Illinois. They make custom AKs, beautiful guns. Wow, that's great. And oh, yeah, I, I, had I, an I, for them, I had an <laughs> I had an interview with a, a guy from uh, Illinois that is a he has, really? a, he, has a, he has a great a few couple of years ago. He specialized in a K forty seven and I think he's from Poland originally. Let's see if I remember his name. Uh, probably, oh. probably you saw his channel. Let's see, AK forty-seven. Ah, uh, K Operator Union. Which one? Yes, yes, yes. You remember? Yeah, you yeah. remember him? Uh, you. Uh, what is his name? Uh, uh, let's see if I. Oh, uh, Rob Sky. I don't know. Rob Sky. Yeah, Rob Sky. I don't know. Robski or whatever. Oh, Rob Robski. Sky. Yes, yes, yes. Robski. By the way, I got like a, you know, not bad. Almost eleven thousand views on this little interview. But uh, I know he's from around there. I think outside, uh, mm -hmm. you know the. The, the, yeah. the city, you know, yeah. that's why you can shoot also these rifles, by the way. But any, uh, please yeah. remind remind your uh, your uh, channel how people can find you on YouTube. It's really easy. The name of the channel is El Tenda, as you read it, as you spell it, is El Tenda channel. Really easy. You can find it. Um, another huge channel. I got one thousand two hundred ninety two views. Which uh, sorry, subscriber, which is good. And I mean, to me, I like I said before, the look I don't do for for money or business. If I can get it, if our company send me something, okay, and I get a good deal, or if they send me a free sample, yeah. maybe you know, it's a small thing. I can I cannot pretend a rifle, you know, yeah. but you know, but you, know link, you, you never magazine. you never know. Listen, the point you know, all starts somewhere, and it's always beautiful. You know, if you, I always believe when you work hard and and you try to do your best. The natural consequence would be very nice also if you can make a living out of that. You never know. I mean, they all start somewhere. And uh, I know oh, it yeah. takes, takes a lot of time and effort because, you know, especially video is more demanding than audio. You know, you need to edit it. Uh, you need to put it together, upload it, even just the sides. On top even the concept, you know, the lighting and everything they set up. It, it takes time. I understand that. But, you know, you're doing something great, I believe. And also it's part of who, who you are your legacy you know what i what what you love the things that you love and i think it's beautiful you share with everybody and maybe who knows maybe next mm -hmm. year you're gonna have a hundred thousand uh subscribers and maybe at that point you don't need to work anymore for a gun company because <laughs> all, all you can do is stay home with your dogs and uh, reviews and shoot guns and get paid that would be great that would be awesome that would be awesome never know. a good retirement that's for you, sure you never know that would be great at least uh, uh, okay, listen, I want to say hi to you and your lady and your puppy. And uh, thank you also. I always see your p comments on Facebook, excuse me, on Facebook, on on uh, on YouTube, on my little channel there. And I appreciate your feedback always. And uh, let me know whenever you got new products coming out, be in touch, okay? 
Sure, sure. I mean, Gianluca, if you, I don't say if you want to come over here, because it, I don't think it's the best state in the United States. It might be easier if I come over there one of these days. Yeah, uh, as a matter of fact, I go at SHOT Show every year, which is in Las Vegas. Okay, when you uh, go to Las Vegas, in... let me know, because I am only two hours away, okay, from one of my you can locations. Get a pass too. You can get a pass, too, because you're a manufacturer, right? Yes. So you can you can ride, and they can give you a pass. You know, you got to pay for it, probably. Yeah, that's fine. But you fine. can give a pass, and you can, you can spend three or four days. It's actually really interesting for your business, too. No, I need, to, I, I need to go to SHOT. This is my. This is going to be my first SHOT, the coming SHOT. I forgot the, the day. When is going to be the day, the time? Next year, I don't know. Normally, it's end of January, half yeah. of January. It depends. It's kind of yeah, it's winter for sure here. Yes. That I can tell you. It's the yeah. only snowy when I leave from, from Illinois. So. No, I want to go next year for sure. And I was almost tempted to get a little stand, something. Who knows? We will see. But uh, Yeah, I mean, yeah. Yeah, you got to think about that. There is, there, is there is a media day, which is really expensive. There is another day with a little range day. You know what I mean? Yeah. You can have a little stand outdoors. But get a, get a stand inside is really, really, really expensive. No, I know there are prices out of their mind, but you know for sure I need to go go there, check it out, and uh, meet some people, and I would love to meet you, man. Okay. Of course, indeed, no problem, Jaluka. All right, listen. Have, we, what I'm gonna do go now? Get... What I'm gonna do? If you want, you can stay with me. By the way, what I was gonna do right now, uh, last Sunday, I started to let's say share. I don't like the word teaching because even technically I got the uh, instructor uh, qualification as. Uh, NRA for refuse to be a victim uh, program, but let's say I like to share the things that I learned on my uh, latest uh, instructor class that I passed mm -hmm. for uh, this program called uh, Refuse to be a victim. It's a program created by the NRA uh, years ago that is not about shooting. It is about uh, let's say create the mindset and the education to try to avoid to be a victim of criminals. So I'm going through pretty much their program and I thought it would be something nice to share it on the air because after all, uh, that's for me the most important thing. As I said, a gun is a tool to be free and also to avoid uh, bad things happening to an innocent person. But before we reach mm -hmm. the gun, there are so many things we can do to avoid that situation, uh, even just with awareness or preparation or being proactive. So if, if it's okay, it's up to you. I'm going to take a little Zana coffee break and then after that, mm -hmm. I will be back with this uh, I refuse to be a victim part two last sunday already did part one and today we will go through other information that i think people may enjoy if you have a gun or not out there doesn't matter this information is going to be benefiting everybody even if you are a, a you know you hate guns fine even better i'm sure unless you're a masochist uh, you like to be uh you know in pain or be a victim of a criminal you would like to avoid to be a victim so please listen to this part and uh, and uh, if you want, Fabrizio, you can stay with me. Now, let's just give me a break sure. one second. Uh, I'm going to get Zanna coffee, little break, and we'll be back. You're listening to Love, Guns, and Freedom. We'll look at Zanna on K-Talks, 1340 AM. Here we go. We are back on the air. You're listening to Love, Guns, and Freedom. We'll look at Zanna. You hear my keys? I got my keys around the studio. It's a mess. I need to organize a little bit things. But now... This is the moment of guns, and I want to take a break. I'm on the air with my friend El Tenda uh, from the El Tenda channel. YouTube uh, is a, let's say, first of all, it's, it's a new American in process. The man is great. He's from Italy, like I, I'm myself from Italy, and is in the process to become an American. I love that, and I love the fact that he loves guns. He understands the Second Amendment, and that's the type of people I really like to be hanging around. Sometimes I have friends in Italy that, you know, I like them. You know, they're my friends, you know but they come from a mindset completely different. They don't understand. They say, why do you want guns? Why do you need guns? Because unfortunately we've been trained in, uh, in uh, history, in Europe in general, that slaves, you know, subjects, they don't really need guns because only the men of the king, the king's, the king's men have guns. Or, and normally the average person out there was not really allowed to have a weapon unless going for hunting purposes. And this is exactly the different mentality they also write that we have in America. What do you think about that, Fabrizio? This mindset. I mean, it's, I mean, it's well, it's important, you know. Since I move over here, it's it's something I realize that it's a, 
it's a God-given right, as I said, you know, if you believe in, I mean, whatever you believe, but, you know, anybody <laughs> believes, but what I'm saying is a foreign way to say that, you know. Natural right, Defend let's say, family. for people that don't believe in that's God, that's natural fine. Right. Natural right. You, know, natural you, right. you as a free human being, you have the right to defend your life, to defend the innocent if you want to, and also to defend liberty. That's the, was the main purpose. But, you know, they said, I have a lot of friends in Italy, okay, that we, we grew up together, and uh, I understand that they don't just even get it uh for them it's a why why i mean it's like very difficult because i understand that in italy we don't have a bill of rights like here we don't have a, a like a natural right there is no even real first amendment and for sure there is not a second amendment like all over europe do you have any friends out there that look at you like a weirdo because you know you're really into gun business on top not only you know you you, you like guns but also you make guns and you carry guns do you have any family relative in Italy say, oh, maybe you're a little crazy out there, gun nuts? <laughs> no, no. Uh, I got the, I actually, I have a, you know, my mom and my, mom and my papa. Yeah. <laughs> they understand guns? They yeah, all... and, uh, uh, yeah, you know, they've always been afraid, you know, and I mean, I mean they come from two different, they come from two different, uh, um, in English, uh, Social extraction, you know, my mom was a, a Christian, you know, party, we call it, you know, you know, that probably Democracia Cristiana. So they were more very religious, very conservative, and somehow not very open to certainly well, issues. And my father has been, a, you know, grew up, wasn't, you know, part of the, unfortunately, part of the Communist Party in the, <laughs> in the 60s, you know. You know, in the 60s, but I have to say that in the 60s probably was making sense because the strikes in the factory were somehow a good thing because the people were uh, underpaid. There was no right. You can the, strike. You can strike. Uh, my opinion: you don't need to be a communist to strike. You need to be a human no, being no, no. Yeah. that you know mm -hmm. you get together, say, "I want to get better deals," and you organize. That's fine. My problem in general, you know, with uh, any party, but especially a party that they try to create this sort of collectivist uh, force of you, upon you because it can be mm -hmm. fascism or communism is the same the idea that uh, there is no more the individual as a right because it's all in the mm -hmm. collectivist you know the fascist after all was a socialist party and there was pretty much the same yep. idea uh it's just mm -hmm. different you know colorful variation but the idea that you as an individual you have no right the state controls your life every aspect of your life and of course also of your money and then, of course, if you don't like it, guess what? This is not like a, a, an option. You will be forced to comply. And that's what socialism, like the fascism, did. And also like communists did in general, in history. But, you know, I understand, you know, there is also then other aspect. Could be workers uniting together to try to find a way to get better wages. But as I said, if I was a regular blue-collar worker, I would probably would have enjoyed any party. I would just leave it as a worker. Yeah. I, know, I know probably I wouldn't fit mm -hmm. in that profile. But anyway, talking about Maybe, guns, yeah. I would be afraid if yeah. I was in Italy, more than guns, I would be afraid of the government that now is forcing oh, yeah. you, your children to be vaccinated. And more important, mm -hmm. they don't give you even the opportunity to defend yourself because now Italy is overrun by illegal aliens, by every type of, uh, you know, you got every type of mafia, the Nigerian mafia, you got the the, 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 the North African, Russian mafia. What do you think about that? Well, they passed, recently, uh, uh, they have a poll, I think. They passed uh, 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 a thing about legitimate defense, I call in Italy, or self-right, the self-defense right. And um, they passed it recently, and um, um, sorry about the dog barking. And but in they pass it, but it, it was a funny thing because they says you can only shoot the intruder if it's outside is dark or it's overnight. You know what I mean? Wow. So <laughs> it's stupid. So no, in, in other words, I told my parents, <laughs> close the blind. You know, if somebody breaks in your house, tell them you were taking a nap and you didn't know what time it was. Oh, you know, that's, that's the only thing you can do otherwise. It, it's it's stupid. You know what I mean? It, and they have so many restrictions, you know, they have, you know, it's very difficult to get a permit, impossible to get a concealed carry permit. It's all I know that yeah, no, uh, no. I read the news lately, people that are defending themselves for different acts of violence in their homes, on their business, mm -hmm. they got arrested, even the police got arrested. It is completely yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. unbalanced, completely strange, no strange criminal, because at the same, the same time it's criminal that the government 
I want to see if you try to break in into some senator home or into some, you know, deputato home, you know, like a, a congressman home or anything. Do you, they have guns. They have, uh, more important, they have armed guards. And you slave, oh, yeah. us slaves, we cannot even have a slingshot in Italy. That's the reality. But let me enjoy yeah. one second yeah. the last sip of the Zanna coffee before we go into the uh, topic I was going to talk with you. Because I tell you, sometimes it's very stressful. You know, I see still family members out there that they live in like in fear. And more important, they live in like is a new Italy. Italy changed like Europe is changed. I mean, you go oh, out yeah. there, you can't even understand any more the language. And you know, don't get me wrong, you know, oh, yeah. I'm an immigrant myself, but this is not an immigration. That's an invasion. That's what's happening in Europe. So they let me enjoy mm -hmm. a little bit of uh, my little Italy that I bring with me. Yeah, at that point, you know, as you say, people like us, they, we emigrate, uh, you know, everybody find their way to bring a little bit of the best of Italy we had. And for me, it's my coffee. And of course, then we have a passion in together in common that we like Thomas Million. <laughs> that's another story. Yeah, 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 yeah. That's a, that's a, that's a classic, classic yes. Italian movie. I mean, there's many others that I like. It's, you know, Alberto Sordi, Toto, uh, Gasman, you know, Tognazzi, the yes. great actor, you know, that, that's a good thing about Italian actor, like American actor, you know, they were underestimated. Well, Thomas Million was Cuban, well, actually, was Cuban, then American, then Italian. Yes. But then, you know, the Italian cinema is always considered a, a serious cinema, like, you know, Fellini or, 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 you know, all the big, you know, director, you know, but they, they are really good comedy, bitter comedy, I call them, you know? Yeah. Like, uh, yeah, the, what was the title of the Italian one with Alberto Sordi that is, is put in jail without any charge and he's yeah. in jail for a while. Condannato in attesa di Giudizio. something like that in Italian. Yeah. Uh, pretty much yeah. like yeah. now in, in America it's happened, you know, with the National Defense Authorization Act of 2012 under Obama and of course they, you know, we had part of the the Congress was responsible too. In America now, you can be put in jail without any type of charges, and definitely, that's the new America. Yeah. Uh, and let's enjoy the gun part. Otherwise, I go crazy here. First of all, I want to yeah, say, sure, sure. Sorry, I no, it's okay. No, that's, that, that's good. No, that's good. That's good. I'd like to talk about everything. Uh, first of all, listeners out there, uh, I want to tell you this. You know, this show it is a show that pretty much is an act of love. I couldn't care less to be on the air. Honestly, I have so many things I can do and I don't need to be on the air. I'm not here, I don't wanna be the next radio guy and I don't even have the skills. My, it's listen to my English, still sucks after all these years. So I'm here because I have a mission. The mission is to bring you information that normally on a commercial radio station or in general, you would not be able to find. And more important, I want that this microphone becomes your microphone. You agree with me or not, doesn't matter. This is about freedom of speech. That's the most important thing I really treasure along with the rest of the Bill of Rights. So, how do mm -hmm. you do that? How do you keep this show free? First of all, support the station, K Talks. You know, it's a great radio station, but also for my internet channel and for the effort that I produce the show independently, I need your help. What better way, first of all, to just, uh, if you drink coffee, go to www.zannacoffee.com. Even the dog there, the puppy, agrees. Probably wants some Zanna coffee. I, I can hear him. So anyway, Zanna Coffee, it's uh, organic coffee. I create the blends, I produce it, I market it, it's my coffee. And when you purchase a bag of Zanna Coffee, it doesn't matter if it's straight shot espresso or 1776 or Rue 66, guess what? You support Love Guns and Freedom. That's what you do. Now, back to the gun part. Uh, as I said, last couple of weeks, I went to finish my NRA certifications that I took as an instructor. I did different certifications. Among those, also the latest one was refused to be a victim program. Now, I don't go exactly by the NRA program everything because I'm trying to always uh, reinterpret and to recreate my own curriculum. So what I'm sharing with you now, it is not the official NRA program about refuse to be a victim, but it is uh, what I like, what I learn, maybe under my own opinions and eyes. So let's continue the part. The idea is to try to avoid scumbags in your life and you become a victim. That's pretty much my uh, not politically correct interpretation. How do we avoid to have criminals at, you know, finding us like easy victims? One of the places that normally people underestimate, it's the home, you know? You think at home you're safe, right? I think almost everybody think at home is safe. Is it for you the same, Fabrizio? Oh yeah, well, I mean, it's uh, yeah. I would say yes. Is the the my in in emergency case? I call it my fortress. You know. Yeah. Uh, that we use. 
it, it is for sure the yeah. most private place we have because after all, you know, we have the keys. It's our place. You know, nobody is allowed uh, unless we want it. But that's also a little false sense of security, especially if you live in the average American home. Uh, for example, mm. I'm sure you have a lot of windows out there, and maybe some people have also these doors with the glass. And more important, you don't even need that. You don't even need that. Just the average American door, entry door. I don't care how strong it is. The frame, it is just a piece of wood, and the screws. They are really small screws that I practically tested myself with one kick without being trained. Mod maybe two kicks. You can easy, completely, breach out that door in less than two seconds. Uh, did you ever thought about that, Fabrizio? Uh, yes. Actually, somebody told me that when they install the, the screws, they use uh, some really short screws. Yeah, sorry, install the door. Yeah. They really use some short screws from attach the frame to the wall. One of the things they recommend is actually replace those screws for with longer ones. Not that it's going to be a defeat, the, defeat the, the, the aggressor, but the mild of it and help. But... Uh, yes, indeed, the, the door over here are ridiculous lightweight. In Italy, we have, I mean, in Italy, I'm assuming they sell them over here too. We have the porta blinda, blindata, they call them. The blind, uh, they're not blind, armor door, whatever you want to call them. They're really heavy duty door with kind of impressive, actually, and heavy. And they defend your house a little bit better. Although there's always a way they can find to open this door. I mean, uh, criminals are full of resources, you know. Oh, listen, uh, no, no, no place, it's, uh, every place can be taken over. doesn't matter. You know, it's only a yeah. question of time or resources. But one thing we must achieve to at least have uh, some sort of, uh, let's say, delay in their time. Because the point is, for example, mm -hmm. you are in, your, in front of your TV. Enjoy your time with your lady and your dogs watching a movie, maybe. And you think you're safe. And normally what happened, the average person, I'm not speaking for you, I don't know, but I know that the average person I know, when they go home, the first thing they do, they take the gun off and maybe they put it in their safe. So at that point, you are in front of your television and uh, you watch your movie. You are in some sort in a, let's say, safe environment. At least you think that. But for a dedicated home invader that maybe can be more than one, and now we know home invasions, they are pretty much done in group because rats walk in park. Uh, they take, mm -hmm. it may take less than two seconds to break the door and maybe another second to be in front of you and maybe at 10, 15 feet while you're watching TV. And that's something oh, yeah. that people take another two seconds to say, is it really happening to me? And at that point, it's too late. Uh, the average person cannot run fast enough to the safe and open the safe and get the gun. So the point is, I really believe that there are some things we should do to at least reinforce the entrance. That means the doors entry doors number one now without even going to the expensive world of portable in the other you know armored doors that they are really nice but they are really expensive the most important thing we can do it is the frame itself how the door is anchored to the frame and there are some uh, very affordable solutions that for example you can buy also at uh, you know hardware stores like home depot even i don't try to push home depot I, by the way i can't stand the shop i always get lost there but anyway uh, there are for example <laughs> plugs they are like where you put your screws, that there are these steel, uh, steel uh, let's say, call them steel uh, door frames, that they are mm -hmm. probably a little longer than the average one. And then, you, of course, you go down with the deeper screws. There's kit, it's about $70, $80, uh, easy to install. And right there with the average exterior door, that means it's not the typical, you know, uh, all of door, just right there with the extra point of reinforcement to the frame you have at least a door that's gonna withstand much more you know effort from the average uh, scumbag to try to break in you know if somebody starts to pound the door and kick it and kick it you have the time to get up and have a plan so that's the first thing i would like to suggest everybody to get at least reinforce their doors in the best way they can now second thing avoid a typical chain belt because uh that's really something easy to cut uh it takes a second with a ball cutter, okay? There are alternatives, for yep. example, like uh, the little um, lock that you can put behind the security inside the security chain. Now, another important thing, there is technology out there. Uh, you can have video cameras with a ring door. Uh, fine, that would be a great solution. But even the little spy eye, the little, you know, 
way that you can see who's behind the door, it's a must. So you gotta really work on the doors. Same story on the windows. You know, windows, you know, best case scenario, by the way, I hate too many windows because forget about opening the windows. All they need to do is mesh the window, okay? It takes a second. But even there, there are solutions. They sell, for example, films that normally they use by banks or other businesses that you can somehow apply to the windows. Even your windows is not bulletproof. With this special film, it will take much more, uh, let's say, hits by a hammer or, or let's say a rock or anything to break it down. And it would take a lot of more time and it will give you the opportunity to realize that somebody's breaking the window. Did you ever seen any of these uh, special films that you can apply to the windows that make the windows almost bulletproof? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I think uh, actually that some of them can be ordered online at whatever um, store, you know. Um, yeah, I well, agree with you. You know, everything can give you anything, can give you a few seconds of advantage is good. You know, it's like light on a, on a weapon, for example. You know? yeah. Everyone is like, oh, I got a 6,000. I'm making an example. Eh? 6,000 yeah. lumen torch. I'm like, well, you don't need a 6,000 because I, it's, I, I explain everybody, you know, your light won't go on all the, won't be on all the time. You got to switch it on, blind the guy in front of you and then turn it off because you're going to give away your solution and your position. Sorry. Yes. <clears throat> yes. That's very important too. We're talking about lights. That's a very important thing. You know, if you are in a, any environment that using the light, you don't want to keep the light on all the time because otherwise it's going to be a magnet for bullets. That's going to happen with the lights. Mm -hmm. you, know, you use the light and then you turn it off and you move and then eventually you use it again and you will move. And also another important thing, for example, there are different philosophies or techniques they install on the weapon lights that I think has some benefits, mm -hmm. you know, because after all you get your gun uh, all in two hands, you know, and you don't need to carry this light on the other hand and at the same time you need to you know handle the gun with one hand but there is a problem though when you have your light on the gun what happens uh, pretty much the bullets they will fly towards that direction and you know that probably you're gonna have the gun close to your face you know trying to get an aim or focus on the front side or whatever so that's kind of you know as you said you need to really play very carefully with the light otherwise there is also the benefit with the don'ts of course to have like an exterior light, like external light, like an hand mm -hmm. unheld a little flashlight. And what are the benefits? The benefits that you can keep the light away from your body. Let's say, you know, I point the light completely away from my head, like almost an extremity of my body, of my body. At that point, let's say somebody's trying to shoot, they will try to shoot at the light and hopefully they don't see my body, or at least they don't go straight to my body. And of course we have the don'ts is that meanwhile, I will have to handle, you know, grip my gun with one hand wholly. So there is both, you know, both ways. Mm -hmm. But at the point is, no yeah. matter what, ever light, especially anywhere, but especially in your house, you must always be sure to articulate to see and identify your threat. That's a fact. So mm -hmm. anyway, we were talking about yeah, homes. I mean, Go ahead. No, I mean, and plus the, the night, well, between the slashes, night vision, you know, that you acquire when you wake up, you know, Yes, you guys are good, of course. It's it's an important thing too. You know what I mean? It's like, uh, you know, it's it's an it's a, a advantage factor. You know, you might put some little uh, night lights. You know, close the guy breaking in doesn't know where they are. But if you know where they are, they might give you a position, uh, no, give you an idea where you are at the moment when they break in. You know, so yeah. those little lights you put in the outlet. You know, like for babies or for you, if you gotta go in the bathroom like my age. And if you go to the bathroom overnight, you want to kill yourself. Yeah. <laughs> and stepping over somebody. Yeah. So they might give it, okay, am I right over here? So I can maybe hide behind the fridge. No, that's going to do a lot, but at least they give you an idea where they are too, you know? Exactly. Or, you know, there's a lot of ways, to, you know, there's a lot of way to, you know, to make your house safer. If you're in an emergency situation, again, it's the, the poop eat, eat, eat the fan, you know, and really, really, really gets bad. You can make improvise uh, alarm system between the slashes, you know, inside your house or outside your house. You know what I mean? If the rules of the law go, goes bad, you know, unfortunately, it will never happen. Yeah, or the point to have, to have a plan. Whatever you're doing, you have a plan in RC. Don't just say, okay, I'll sort it out. So it's important, of course, that you have a way that, you know, one thing I like, for example, is motion sensor lights. 
around the house mm -hmm. because you know if somebody break yep. in breaks in at least every time they move you can see the light going around and that's going to be interesting you know normally they would probably hate it and could be also defuse the situation but very important mm -hmm. also you know is try to avoid that they even come in so control the entrances control the doors control the windows especially if you have french doors they're different system to block the base that's the number one thing now when using locks of course dead bolts is a must uh, don't be cheap there get the best thing you can get and be sure be sure that uh, you know if you have workers around your house or you give them the keys guess what then change the keys re-keys everything you know don't leave the key around even when you go for example you know people go to change tires you know and they leave their car at the mechanic hey can you please uh, change me the tires or change the oil oh, and normally they your home key they are or the same block with your car keys guess what mm -hmm. i never do that i always leave just the car keys because if somebody has bad intentions all they need to do is open the you know the compartment with your address you know where you have the documents for your registration get your address mm -hmm. at that point uh, they change the oil eventually they will also have the time to make a copy of your home keys and that's really you give them i don't care what type of of uh, dead bolts you have they will get in easier very easy so that's another mm -hmm. thing to think now lighting very important uh you should have motion sensor lighting for sure all around the perimeter of your house they're very inexpensive you know you can get them for starting from twenty dollars get them every corner so every time somebody gets closer you have light automatically you can be at least warned and, and normally you know like roaches criminals don't like uh, light on them uh very important mm -hmm. also timers with lighting let's say you leave the house for a few days uh there's different mm -hmm. system now even you know you can go from the cheapest system just automated you know with time or you can have some other system you can control remotely with your cell phone or smartphone so it's very important that you have lighting out there uh, so that's just yep. some little ideas now another important thing i like for example is to clear all the different areas that they can cover and hide uh criminals for example if you have like uh, mm -hmm. shrubs or if you have uh, you know a bunch of uh, flowers or bushes in front of your home uh be sure that they are clear because anything people can hide that's very bad for you uh if you really want to put something out for example under the windows what i like i like cactus I like uh, uh you know roses something that could be very you know you need to go really organized because you're gonna get in pain if you try to jump on it you know that's pretty much the idea uh if i can ask mm -hmm. you when this is something just personal when you are mm -hmm. in your home normally do you still carry your gun or not i'm just curious um not really when i go to bed it's pretty close to me yeah but normally and normally, in the normally if i'm home yeah. i have the habit of uh, rotate clean some of my gun yeah. rotation you know what i mean so i always have one with me anyway okay, close that's, at least that's and good. i'm talking about long gun too so. that's good because many so people some others always... yeah many people unfortunately yeah. i know that uh, they just put a gun away and i understand if you have kids you know uh yeah. you don't want to leave the gun on the table but that's why I said the, mm -hmm. the safest place, if you have kids or people underage that you know, or any other people that don't want to access your gun, keep your, the gun on you because most of the act of violence, they happen in the house when people normally, they completely mm -hmm. think they are safe. Uh, home invasions, they're getting very serious, even around here. Uh, but just there was one last week, by the way, but guess what? It was on, on headline on the news, home invader got shot and killed. Uh, in Arizona, you know, if you go for home invasion, if you're a bad guy, you better double up your life insurance if you can have one, because it's this is the environment, the average person, you know, we don't have all the restrictions many other states have, and more important, the mindset is pretty much, you know, we live, uh, uh, I don't want to say in the middle of nowhere, but guess what? It's like the old times. Uh, the sheriff uh, mm -hmm. comes always at the end when the shootout it's over because it's, sometimes it's just the way it is i mean before the sheriff even comes to my place it takes 20 minutes at least so that's mm -hmm. the story how, yeah, is, how is how is the response time in, in your area where you live in uh, illinois for the police uh, to come um, thank god the police i don't know the response time but i know the police station is uh, literally 
three minutes from my house. Okay, so you got kind of good location so on that. Yeah, so there's no riff raff going on, you know, it's no, 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 yeah. gang related. I'm, I'm limited, you know, and they keep, uh, they keep everything under control. Even little kids they go around doing stupid uh, vandalistic stuff. You know what I mean? Yes. They, they get, they get caught, catch pretty quick. Which give you an idea how serious they are over here. Yeah, you know, people want to be quiet. It's a blue ca collar area. Yeah, a bunch of people work for company. They have company. You know, yeah, they, Hispanic mostly. You know, the Puerto Rican, Mexicans. Mm -hmm. um, actually, my block there's a bunch of white people, which is normally there's not a lot of them. They live in a nicer part of the town. Mm -hmm. But most of the people, like I said, in my area, seventy percent they have a company. Their own company, you know, the construction guy, landscaping guy. Yeah, small businesses. So it's kind of a blue collar, yeah, blue collar area. So everyone is, is you know, they don't, nobody, is, you know, they, they, they're mostly very friendly, you know. Yeah, that's good, that's good. It, it is another, very good important. another good way for defend your house, if you can have that, would be a dog too, you know. Yeah, I, all well, that defect that you have, you know. I was going to talk about dogs, yeah. you know, there are some pro and don'ts, of course, like everything. Dog can be very good to warn you. The problem is uh, two little things. If the dog is outside dog, let's say you have a, a garden, can be easily, uh, let's say, neutralized with food, uh, poison, or anything. You know, unfortunately, they can shoot a dog too. I mean, they can kill it. And uh, that's mm -hmm. the problem. That's why I like dogs normally inside the house because yep. or, or in an area that is confined, especially at night, you know, if you have like a cage or some sort of a place that they don't go close to the fence because they can call the dog, give him a hot dog, the dog, Best case scenario, they're gonna do. They're just gonna, you know, bribe him and give him some food, and the dog may be nice. Unfortunately, they kill him. They yeah. give him a hot dog or food with poison, or just cut his throat. Mm -hmm. So that's what they really. I like to have the dogs uh, close to uh, a place that they cannot go. To, they, they can. He cannot go through the to, to, close to the fence. So at least that point, he can bark in a safe way. Or if you live in an apartment, of course, have a dog inside your bedroom that he would warn you if there is somebody at the door or something like that. That would be very good, I think. Uh, of course, dogs in that, you need to have love, like you're saying, you know, time, you know, taking care of him, and also a little extra liability. You know, your home insurance may go up a little bit because after all, you know, you, it's part of the liability. But beside that, I think dogs can be very great alarm system. Listen, Fabrizio, mm -hmm. I really enjoy the time. It goes so fast. One more time, give us the website or the YouTube channel where people can find you. Very easy. I'm on Instagram, Facebook, and, and, and YouTube, of course. The channel is called El Tenda, like, uh, you know, El Tenda channel, like, uh, like you pretty much, you know, Hispanic way to call my channel, I guess. El Tenda is actually Venetian, so. And uh, El Tenda channel is a channel about 70% um, guns, 60% guns, sorry. 30% prepping, which is a good thing always, I think, in any case, and 10% toys and collectibles. So Very good. And by the way, my best to your lady. I never met her, but I saw she cooks pretty well, especially on the barbecue, yeah. okay? Uh, you can come over one of these days for a barbecue, see? I would love The problem <laughs> that uh, it's going to be difficult to fly for me, but I will find a way to get you, my friend. All right, Lisa, ready for okay. our number three? Uh, that was uh, Love, Guns, and Freedom, our number two, Guns. And now we go in the hour of love. We're going to have a very interesting conversation now. Do not go away. <laughs> 